Hey everyone, Schmuckles. Don't mind my hair shook up. Today we're going to be going over the mid-chapter 31.5 patch notes for Dead by Daylight. I don't usually post videos like this, but there's enough intriguing information and changes in this update for me to want to make a video on this. The Twins update is one of the most anticipated updates, I think, in Dead by Daylight's history. So this March developer update is going to have updates for the Twins, the Blight, a Haddonfield rework, an update to three perks, including Decisive Strike. PTB is not available on Switch or console, or Epic Games either. It's just for Steam. So here's the major update for the twins change reduce the amount of time it takes to switch back from charlotte to 1.5 seconds was three seconds i think this is encouraging players to switch back to charlotte from victor just so there's less slugging going on change reduce the time it takes to charge victor's pounce to 0.85 seconds was one second so these changes are making victor a little bit stronger and making him feel a bit more mobile something that's brand new is the added ability to recall victor at any point while he was unbound so pretty much you're not going to be stuck with victor on one side of the map if you don't want him on one side of the map this was a big problem because if you had victor way out of position and then you wanted to switch back to charlotte victor is sort of stuck and lost way out of position on the map but instead now you can recall victor at any point while he's unbound new added the ability to change between victor and charlotte near a hooked survivor so you could actually use victor or charlotte to technically sort of camp or even face camp the hook even if you're not using them dev note we have made switching between charlotte and victor more responsive given the killer has the ability to recall victor at any time so they feel better to play be warned the anti-face camp camp meter will still fill if you're too close. So if you're using Victor or Charlotte to camp the hook while using the other one on the other side of the map, it's actually still filling the anti-camp meter. So although you can use Victor or Charlotte to face camp, it really makes no sense. There were seven changed updated add-ons for the twins. This is a huge change right now. Victor's pounce is no longer able to latch onto healthy survivors. Instead, Victor can no longer be kicked after successfully pouncing, which do not latch onto survivors. So pretty much if Victor pounces on a healthy survivor, he's going to bounce off that healthy survivor and he cannot be kicked or destroyed this prevents healthy survivors who take a hit from victor from sort of holding victor hostage and just not getting victor off of their shoulder in the past when they did that they would be giving the killer killer instinct and showing nearby survivors with killer instinct as well and they could essentially deny the killer access to using victor for a long period of time making the killer pretty much an m1 killer but instead victor is still viable and playable and unkickable if he actually hits successfully hits a healthy survivor new victor's pounce now latches onto healthy survivors when they're put into the dying state. Other survivors can crush Victor during this to help the dying survivor. Victor will automatically return to Charlotte after 20 seconds. So Victor now only latches onto survivors when they are in the dying state. And actually they show a visual of this happening, I believe right here. Behavior actually showed a visual of this happening. Victor will now only latch onto survivors who go into the dying states. Victor is going to automatically return to Charlotte after 20 seconds of being on that survivor in the dying state. This is actually the window when survivors can crush Victor. So during this window, other survivors can actually kick Victor. And I was thinking, what's the point of this? Why would they even want to kick Victor in this situation? Well, this is brand new. While Victor is attached to a survivor or holding a survivor in a locker, Charlotte gains 10% haste effect. This effect will be lost prematurely if Charlotte hits a survivor. And I believe that this haste effect is only going to be active for that 20 second window before Victor automatically returns to Charlotte. If another survivor kicks Victor while Victor is latched onto another survivor during this 20 second window, I think that ends Charlotte's haste effect. They also fully removed that survivors near Victor while he's latched onto another survivor are no longer revealed by killer instincts so i think that might fully remove killer instinct from victor's base kit i'm not 100 sure though that survivor who's on the ground with victor latched onto them may or may not have killer instinct on them i'm actually not sure so previously the twins powers heavily encouraged slugging leaving survivors in the dying state since victor could chain together multiple pounces on injured survivors but only pounce on a single healthy one furthermore survivors could often save each other before charlotte can make it to them so pretty much what they're saying here is these changes allows victor to be more viable against healthy survivors because he cannot be kicked after he successfully lands on a healthy survivor. He doesn't latch onto healthy survivors, he sort of bounces off of them and he's unkickable. However, if there's a group of multiple injured survivors, he's going to latch onto the first survivor that he downs and be less viable at slugging injured survivors. I don't actually know how much this is going to change the slugging situation with the twins because if Victor is on the other side of the map, Charlotte is going to get a free haste for 20 seconds and Charlotte can use that to apply that to a different survivor and just fully leave that person slugged. I mean, slugging seems like it still is going to be a viable strategy if you just down a survivor and then all of a sudden you become a crazy m1 killer with pretty much tier 2 bloodlust for the next survivor that you interact with so i don't know how much it's going to eliminate slugging but we'll have to wait and see clearly charlotte was given this haste so she could actually make her way across the map to pick up that down survivor a little bit faster so they kind of want to encourage twins players to go actually pick up the survivor that slug that victor is interacting with but that haste could also just be used to slug and actually apply it to a different survivor for that first hit 
particularly if Victor is automatically returning to Charlotte after 20 seconds. During that 20 second window, when you have 10% haste as Charlotte, you can try to get that first hit on a survivor and then you'll have Victor back for the second hit. We'll have to wait and see how things work on this PTB, but it seems like it still could be used for slugging and just apply the haste to a new healthy survivor. Okay, so they said we have flipped this around. Victor will now be much more effective at injuring multiple survivors, multiple healthy survivors, I believe is what they're trying to say here, instead of assist Charlotte, who now moves faster when Victor is latched on and is picking up the survivor. This makes it possible for Victor to both injure and down a survivor without being forced to switch back to Charlotte in between. That's actually really interesting. This is actually new right here. The visual Terradius accessibility setting will now feature Victor's grunts. And now Victor will be glowing red whenever he's vulnerable to being crushed. And I'm pretty sure that's just going to be when he's latched on to survivors who are in the dying state. Or I guess technically when he's idle as well, he should still be crushable. I don't think they said anything about that. Dev note, we have updated the visual terror radius to include Victor's grunts to improve accessibility and added a red glow whenever he's being vulnerable to being crushed. So the blight did have an update. It was a minor update. This is a change. Improved collision detection to reduce the cases where the blight slides off of the objects. This actually could be a nice little quality of life update. I wonder if that's going to make like the hug or like sort of curve technique around all those smaller loops a little bit harder for blights to pull off. Dev note, it can be frustrating to slide off an object you were trying to bump onto and end your rush prematurely. This has happened to a lot of people. We have improved the collision detection to make the blight's rush more consistent. This also fixes an issue which allowed the blight to incorrectly slide along obstacles and lunge around tighter corners than intended. There is a medium update to Haddonfield. This is actually a change from the current status of Haddonfield. They updated the map layout and reduced the overall size. They also reduced and changed the length of the hedges and fences to create more openings. So this map's going to be a little bit smaller. Probably those dead zones in the middle of the street are just going to be gone. They reduced the length of the hedges, which actually formed sort of these god loops at these pallets. And I find that the dead zones in the middle of the street were unhealthy for both sides because survivors would always have line of sight on the killer and can just leave early. Since survivors have line of sight on the killer, since it's sort of a wide open area, they could just W key early, creating unfun situation for the killer. At that point, it's not really a chase game. It's more of just like a W you key early game as killer it can be really frustrating to deal with that and just like having no element of surprise because survivors have line of sight on you in those dead zones and for survivors it can kind of be unfun as well because if you end up in one of those dead zones during your chase you really don't have much of a way to defend yourself particularly if the killer actually just breaks some of the pallets that are out in the middle of the street it really just creates a large dead zone in the middle of the map for the killer so these seem like really healthy changes to Haddonfield in my opinion dev note the map's long and narrow shape in the rows of unbroken fences or hedges may getting around the map very time consuming we've reduced the overall size and added more openings to make it easier to traverse change adjusted various houses to reduce the strength of strong loops there were some situations in some of the Hanfield houses where there were actually two really really safe god windows next to each other inside of houses so I wonder if they actually tweaked that because survivors could pretty much just run that three times until it locks before you could get a hit as killer. They've also reduced the number of houses in the map. All remaining houses can be entered. That's crazy. So they've actually made the map smaller and they made all the houses have openings. Dev note, many of the houses were closed off, making the map larger without any room for gameplay. We have reduced the number of houses that spawn, though each one that remains will now be open and playable. We've also reduced the strength of some of the strongest window loops to be fair and more interesting to play. This is exactly what I was talking about. This actually seems a lot more healthy. Survivors have access to a resource, that vault, which cannot be depleted. However, with that doorway there and not just the second vault, it becomes a little bit more unsafe, which means that good survivors are going to be forced to chain this window with other good tiles in the map rather than just recycling it over and over. That seems like a really healthy change for both sides. New, they added pallets and lockers along the edge of the map. That's great. The perk Darkness Reveal is going to be a little bit more viable on this map, as well as just Trickster, Huntress, and Dredge with their powers. Change, they updated the street tiles to feature more pallets. They sort of showed a visual for this as well on the website. To me, I consider those loops with those pallets and those long cars in the middle of the map to be god pallets and that's because the killer cannot lust a survivor around that pallet they must break it so hopefully it's not just like a bunch of those out there but i am all for like making it less of a dead zone and making more playable areas hopefully they made the width of the street just smaller as well too we're gonna have to wait and see dev note the outdoor areas were fairly empty before encouraging survivors to make a run for the nearest house when they were chased since we've reduced the strength of houses we've added some additional loops in the streets on the map to spread out chases and reduce dead zones okay so i'm all for reducing the the dead zones but there still seems to be like a core problem here with that if they don't change the actual size of the street survivors will have line of sight on a killer from a distance so that makes a lot of stealth killers not really viable against survivors that are in the middle of the street i guess if the survivor can crouch like the pig or ghost face they can sort of use the cars to have line of sight against the survivors meaning the survivors will not be able to see crouched stealth killers if there's too many cars in the way but killers who are using stealth perks or have stealth features that are very tall like michael myers if the street is too large and survivors have line of sight in these killers they're much less viable in the 
middle of the street. I also think just throwing a bunch of pallets in the middle of the street is not really going to change that W key game as long as survivors have that line of sight. Like good players are not going to use the pallet next to the gen, they're going to W key early and take the chases to the houses. It seems like the intention of adding pallets closer to the gens and in the middle of the streets, Behavior is trying to discourage survivors from just making a run to the nearest house when chased. And what I'm saying is I still think good survivors will leave early and do that. Good survivors know not to waste pallets that are right next to generators unless absolutely necessary, particularly if the gen isn't even powered. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about that. The street being in the center of the map makes it really difficult for Behavior to put large objects up that make line of sight really difficult for survivors on killers. Intuitively, I think making the street a little bit narrow would actually solve that problem. Decisive Strike got a minor update. I consider this to be a major update personally because look at what they did here. They increased the stun duration to five seconds. It was three seconds. I'm pretty sure it was five seconds before and then they reduced it to three seconds and then it made it really difficult to actually find a vault or a pallet in that amount of time. You had to pretty much use your decisive strike in a loop and just continued the chase in the loop. Increasing it to five seconds is going to be massive. It's going to give survivors pretty much eight more meters of distance if the killer wants to continue to chase them. They also added a new stabbing animation when decisive strike is successfully used. I think that's really cool. I'm really interested to see what this animation looks like because it always has been sort of a stab in the perks description, but they've never actually shown an animation for it. So it's going to look really cool. I'm really excited to see what this animation looks like. Dev note, the survivor is locked in place for part of the stun while they're being dropped by the killer. So before it didn't leave them much time to run away when they hit the ground, we've increased the duration of the stun to give the survivor a fair chance to create some distance. They also added a new animation which plays when a survivor successfully uses DS to break free to give some visual flair to the perk. Adrenaline had a medium update. I'm considering this to be a major update personally. Adrenaline no longer activates if you are hooked when the gates are powered. That is actually massive. If you've been hooked when your adrenaline activates, you're no longer going to be full health when you're unhooked. You probably still will get the sprint burst. The sprint burst boost duration has been decreased to three seconds when it was five seconds. Adrenaline no longer causes you to wake up when facing the nightmare. I actually really like that change myself because Freddy fully loses a portion of his power once the gates are powered. So this makes him a little bit viable against adrenaline users in the end game. Dev note, adrenaline had a lot of exceptions which made it difficult to play around. If a survivor was hooked while the exit gates were powered, they would be healthy and receive a substantial speed boost upon being unhooked, making it very difficult for the killer to catch them before they could escape. We have made it so adrenaline no longer pauses when you are hooked. If adrenaline no longer pauses when you are hooked, you actually might not get that sprint burst if you're on the hook, if it actually just activates in an instant. We've also removed the wake up effect when facing the nightmare to clean up the perk as we moved away from perks that affect the specific killer's powers over the years. That makes a lot of sense. I also really do think that it's really cool that Freddy is actually going to still be viable against Against adrenaline users in the end game. The ultimate weapon received a massive change as well. This is actually huge. It now reveals the survivor's aura instead of causing them to scream. So you no longer need distortion and calm spirit to counter ultimate weapon and or reading perks. All you need is distortion. Distortion is going to fully counter ultimate weapon as well as a variety of other really strong killer or reading perks. Reduced the activation time to 15 seconds. It was 30 seconds and it increased the cooldown to 80, 70 and 60 seconds when it was 40, 35 and 30 seconds. So this was just overall an ultimate weapon major nerf. Dev note, the ultimate weapon was the jack of all trades, providing both information and a consistent way to interrupt survivor actions, allowing it to synergize too well with other perks. Rather than screaming, survivors will instead have their aura revealed. This means it no longer interrupts survivors' actions. Those survivors won't know they're being revealed to the killer. Dude, everyone needs to run distortion because it's going to fully counter so many things in the game now. Since the ultimate weapon was too easy to activate, it was possible to keep its effect active throughout the entire match. We've increased the cooldown and decreased the activation window to ensure some downtime between uses. That's a pretty huge change. They also added a visual overhaul to the entire storm menu. This is what it's going to look like here. They actually provided a couple of screenshots for the new interface for what the Dead by Daylight store is going to be looking like. This update makes it easier to find what you're looking for and allows us to bundle content together at a reduced price. I think this visual change is pretty cool. And that's the majority of the changes that are actually coming with this mid chapter update 7.7. .7. This is the update for the mid chapter 31.5, which is going to be available for Steam users only. Let me know what you think about these changes. Do you think these changes are actually healthy for both sides of the game? Are there any changes you liked? Are there any changes that you really didn't like? I already talked about this in the video, but the twins change, I don't know if it'll exactly go through as intended. I don't know if how much it's going to actually reduce slugging. They they have, although they have adjusted some of the tiles to be a little bit less survivor sided on Hanfield, not changing the street size and just adding more pallet loops out in the middle of the street seems to be pretty survivor sided to me. On one hand, you kind of have the surface area of the map is smaller, which is actually better for killer. There's also some of the nerfs to the indoor house loops, and there's actually less houses on the map too, but every single house is going to be playable. The street size itself didn't necessarily change, and there's going to be more more pallets available to survivors in the center of the map. So it seems like there's good and bad for both sides in that update. That does it for this video. Goodbye.